not as big smash as uh, Orange is the New Black, but uh, thank you so much, Al. That's uh, very nice of you. Hey, we'll do what we can. <laughs> well, that's what that's what my talk is all about. It's about doing what you can because I, like Scott Morrison, don't hold a hose. So I can erect a billboard. And <laughs> you are also um, someone who's using their own power to do what they can. So tell us about this decision to cancel your green card as someone who's applied for visas in America. That is lots of money gone down the drain, but with hopefully for a good reason. Yeah, I mean, it was a powerful moment for us as Australians, I'm sure, across this great continent of ours. We saw the reality really hit home, and it was an emotional reality, a terrifying reality, an incredibly sad reality. Um, And I was, you know, choking on the smoke and choking on the reality that we had so little leadership uh, federally, and, and I was being very vocal about it. But then, of course, late at night, I woke myself up with the realisation that I had very little leadership in my own life. Um, Where was I willing to change? Mm. And, you know, at the time, I had a real sacrifice mentality about what I was giving up to let go of this green card. But the reality is there's just so much to gain. Um, I... I learned this idea, I started studying part-time, looking at sustainability to understand a bit more about this stuff and I learned this term cognitive dissonance and it was this idea that, you know, when there's this gap between your beliefs and your actions and I realised I had a, a really serious case of cognitive dissonance and I needed to close that gap up. And by living a little closer towards my beliefs, um, I think, you know, it improves your mental health. I think closing that that gap up is really important. And, um, you know, when I started talking about this stuff, I realised so many people were holding this pain and anxiety and and concern. Um, And actually talking about it more kind of lets the floodgates go and then you feel kind of, uh, you feel more free to act. And since that decision, which was, you know, at the end of 2019, I've been able to to act more. And I've discovered, of course, that, you know, the the antidote for anxiety is, of course, action. And, you know, in my own little limited world, I'm putting lots of energy into into trying to make change and and have change uh, stimulated in in the local area where we live. And um, it's reduced my anxiety, I can report. You live on the south coast. Is that uh, Jerengong? Is that where you are? Uh, we we live in Bulai, um, but the the whole area is known as the Illawarra. It, it's Yuen country. Um, our area specifically is Darla land, and um, it's just a gorgeous, rich place to live with abundant natural resources and just brilliant people who live there. So, how else? I mean, when you were in LA and you were making that decision. Were you t- who were you talking to and what were people saying about your th- your thought process? Oh, I was actually on the South Coast. I was in right. Australia. Yeah, I was doing a play in Sydney and I was travelling up and down on the, on the train there and, you know, every sunset was like a red ball of hell. Yeah. And, you know, it was terrifying. We had the, the fires just down the road about 70k away and, you know, we were getting a very clear message that you're not going to get a call so you sort of go to sleep with your windows, you know, your blinds open, kind of like, okay, I guess we just stay awake and watch out for bushfires. Mm. Um, recently I visited uh, Kangaroo Island because, wow. I mean, yeah, I'm in South Australia um, working here on Ghana country and it, I got to meet with the folks there who obviously – met that front and centre and, um, you know, they're, they're rebuilding and their wildlife is recovering. But the reality of this stuff, obviously, is, um, is pretty deep and, and quite gnarly. So what did, your, um, what did your LA agents say when you said you're not coming back? Uh, they know that I'm a self-righteous little prick, so they want to <laughs> They're like, great, yay, or we can book you a green screen studio. We'll send the film down to Australia. It's going to be no, great. Probably good riddance to bad rubbish, I reckon. <laughs> it is not a it's not a decision folks in our industry hold uh, would 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 choose to do very lightly, um, because a lot of our industry is partly trying to make it in another country because the industry here is so small. Yeah, um, there's really interesting ways to move amongst that, Dan, which I've learned about. Um, 
there's an amazing organisation called FEET and, you know, FEET give artists the opportunity to invest in solar, you know, as a comparison to the way that they travel and I would encourage artists to to look into that. Um, It's also an investment model, so it's, you know, telling that economic story of renewables as well, which is an important thing to, to tell.